Architecture diagrams might seem like an afterthought for most students, but they are an essential tool for communicating and generating ideas as an architect. Here's six types of architecture diagrams you should be using and why. A lot of the time I see students that don't know what architecture diagrams are for. These students often have really good architectural drawings. They'll have good floor plans and sections and elevations, but their presentations often have paragraphs of text trying to explain what's going on when really a picture tells a thousand words and they don't need paragraphs of text all they need is a couple of good architectural diagrams especially for your final presentations nobody looks at the text on your posters or if you're showing it to a client they're not going to read text on a presentation they want to look at pictures and diagrams and sketches so diagrams are a way for you to architecturally transform your words into pictures they're used to visually express your ideas is as well as generate new ideas. The openness of diagramming frees you from the traditional constraints of formal architectural drawing. Throughout your entire architecture career, you're going to be using sketches and these diagrams. Whether you're trying to nut out a detail for your building with one of your colleagues, or you're trying to sell an idea to a client, or trying to generate new ideas. There are many different types of diagrams to do these things. So let's go over the most common six of them. Number one is concept diagrams. These are often sketches indicating how you came up with your design or your concept. So what a concept is, is your overarching idea that is influencing your entire project. I have plenty of videos on my channel about architectural concepts. So if you want to learn more about them and how to develop and create innovative design concepts, then check those videos out. Concept diagrams are often the most free flowing and generative types of diagrams. They're often the most experimental and are done usually before the matter rather than after. So it's usually done before, you know, your final presentation or, you know, you're handing up stuff to the client. It's usually done to generate new ideas and to showcase and express your ideas visually without actually having to draw up an entire documentation set. But they can also be done after you've finished and come up with a, with a concept just to visually showcase your ideas, your main driving force for your project. You want to be able to visually showcase that simply and minimalistically without having to use paragraphs of text like I mentioned at the start. I'll often use concept diagrams to generate new ideas for the initial parts of my project and then I'll use those ideas to run through the entire project and I'll constantly come back to them. So these are the most important types of diagrams to do. For example, for my fourth studio, I had the idea and the concept of journey through orbit. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. And so I had three simple diagrams to showcase these main ideas and ran with it for the next, you know, 12 weeks while I completed this project. So coming on from concept diagrams, number two are form diagrams. And these are usually evolutionary, kind of showing how you've come up with your form. So it's taking your concept, your initial idea, and then how has that been formed into an actual mass? How is this formed into an actual piece of architecture? So this is very much trying to show the process of how you got to your final form. Quite often I'll use this to demonstrate uh, my direction for the design and how I got from step one all the way to step 12 or five or whatever step is the last step. Form diagrams are really useful for showcasing the actual mass of your building. A lot of the time these come after the matter though, they'll come after you've come up with your design and you'll kind of showcase that journey of how you got there. And these are great for bringing clients along that journey with you, showing how you came to that final form. You know, rather than just showing them the final form, bringing them along that journey is really going to take them in on that journey and get them invested into your project. The biggest fear of architects is to have a client that is not on board with your design and is constantly wanting to change things and go in a different direction. But if you bring them on that journey with you and you show them why you're doing what you're doing, then it makes it a lot easier for them to you know, take that journey with you and to trust you. The third type of diagrams are program diagrams. 
And these are used to showcase the actual spaces and how they are being used in your building. These can be showcased on either a plan or a section or even an axonometric drawing. They don't just need to be in an actual diagram form. What this is showing is the various programs and the uses inside the building and how they connect with each other and overlap. I usually use one of these for pretty much every assignment I do and every project I do in real life because they are really essential to showcasing what is actually inside your building and how they all relate to each other, spatially and programmatically. This leads into circulation diagrams, which is the fourth type of architecture diagram you should be using. And what these are is pretty similarly to program diagrams. They'll show the different spaces, but they'll also show kind of in between those spaces, how you're moving around the building, the circulation around the building. And this is usually directional. It will have arrows showing where to go through the building from the entry up through to the various stairs and the lifts and also how you circulate around those different spaces. So often you'll have the circulation and the programmatic diagrams together in one and that's something you can do. You can combine all of these different types of diagrams and overlap the different information onto a single drawing. Circulation diagrams are really helpful for showing the user experience and showing how a person enters the building and goes through the various programs and the um, the direction they're going to take through the building. The user experience is so important in an architecture project. For my last studio project for Studio 8, I did a circulation diagram which was an overlapping of the programs as well. So it showed multiple different information in the one single drawing. And I did this in axonometric, which worked really well, but you can also do this in section or plan, which also work really effectively. The fifth type of diagram is a contextual diagram and this is often usually just done to showcase the surrounding context what buildings are nearby how does your building sit within that context you know if your if your building is super tall compared to the surrounding context then that might look a little bit weird but by diagramming it up you'll be able to see that relationship between the different buildings that are nearby you know how it sits within the city or how it sits within the suburb that it's sitting in these are often showing not as much information as the other diagrams, but it could be used with the other diagrams. If you're doing an axonometric, you may as well show some of the context surrounding it. And this doesn't just include the surrounding buildings. This could include, you know, where the nearby creeks are. And um, I guess it's sort of a bit of a site analysis diagram. Where are some of the surrounding shops or the local cafes or stuff like this? The sixth and final diagram that you should be using is a sustainability or passive design diagram. And this is often done as a section or you can do it in plan, axonometric as well, or perspective. You can do it as a sketch, just showing the different passive design tools and strategies you're using in your building. For example, you want to show how you're utilizing your orientation of your building, how the sun is passing through and how you're shading the building, how you're letting sunlight in and daylighting in, how you're protecting the building from wind or rain or how you're utilizing wind and rain. You know, maybe you've got a rainwater storage system and you're taking water from the roof and you want to showcase how that's done. Quite often I'll do a, an overall diagram. Sometimes it's a perspective section kind of thing going on and I'll showcase all these different passive design strategies to show that you are designing passively or sustainably because these are tools that you can be doing in any project and you may as well make the most out of them. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you'd like to see a tutorial on any of these specific diagram types and I'll be more than happy to do it and I'll see you in the next video.